name is Liz Keehan, and welcome again to the Indoor Garden. Today, we're going to go outdoors. The late spring and summer are a wonderful time to revive any sick-looking or sad-looking plants that you may have in your home. It's also the perfect time to take on any messy plant jobs that you may be procrastinating on, such as repotting, cleaning their foliage, leaching, or propagating. So let's get to work now. Oh, hi, Ann. Hi, Liz. How are you today? Oh, I'm pretty good. I saw you were out here in your garden, so I took this opportunity to bring this plant over that I'm having some problems with. See if you might be able to give me a hand with it. All right. I noticed the other day when I was watering it that it's all sticky up here on the leaves, and then I looked, and on the table where it was sitting, it was all sticky all around. Do you know what might be the problem? Well, let me take a look here, but that okay. does sound suspicious. Oh, yeah, here they are. What you've got here is scale. Mm -hmm. You can see a little bit here. Oh, yeah. And some, got one hiding down in here. Uh-huh. And I can see some down in the sides of the stems. Oh, yeah. Here also. Uh-huh. And that's an insect that'll eventually suck the juice out of your plant and kill it. Gross. What so, can we do about it? Well, we need to kill it first. Okay. <laughs> so there are a couple things we can do in order to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. And the first thing we'll do is spray it with an insecticidal soap. Okay. Which I feel is one of the safest ways to spray a plant using the soap as opposed to other insecticides. So uh -huh. I'll get that out of my bag of tricks right here. Okay. And I'll get my gloves. It's always a good idea to wear your gloves whenever you're doing any kind of spraying. So if they still fit, <laughs> I can wear them. And then we'll get to spraying here for you. Okay. Okay, here it is. And we want to make sure that we spray the plant very thoroughly. Uh huh. We'll spray the backs of the leaves, mm -hmm. inside the leaves, mm. the tops of the leaves, mm -hmm. and all the stems. Okay. And make sure we go all around the plant and coat it really well. Okay, and you just let that dry on there? Right. Mm-hmm, and that'll do it. At least as a first step. Okay. Which I'll get to the next part in just a minute. Even though it sounds like we're gonna have a few steps in here, it really isn't all that much trouble. Mm -hmm. And you can get rid of your scale insects quite easily if you're a little bit persistent. Okay. Okay. So I think we've got it just about sprayed Great. right now. Now what I like to do next is to get out a Q-tip mm -hmm. and to actually clean off the little scale insects mm -hmm. because it's really hard to tell if they're dead or not, yeah. I think. And this way you'll be able to see if they're still coming back. So you okay. want to get as many as you can with that. And I'll, I think I have some Q-tips right down here. All right. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. They're perfect for getting rid of scale insects. There you go. And all you have to do mm -hmm. is just kind of scoop them up. Uh-huh. And that's it. You can only get a few on each Q-tip, so you probably need a lot of Q-tips. <laughs> no, they come right off. <laughs> right, but look real carefully around. Okay and see if you can get as many of them off as possible. All right. And then, after you've done that, mm -hmm. you've got one more step here. Okay. Because scales can be really persistent, I like to use systemic granules on mm -hmm. them, which is another way of helping to prevent insects. Mm -hmm. And what they are, I'll show you right here. Okay. Get them down here. Are, they're actually, a uh, insecticide that works through the soil mm -hmm. and the plant actually sucks up hmm. the uh, the poison from the systemic granules through its system so that when the scales suck on the plant they get poisoned. Wow. So this is just an extra added uh, thing to do here and for this we use 
two tablespoons, actually it's two teaspoons in a six inch pot. Uh huh. And you mix it up around the top of your soil. Mm hmm. And you want to make sure that you don't use this teaspoon again for anything other than insecticides. So we'll set that aside only for insecticides. Okay. And then when you get home, what I want you to do is to just really soak the plant really well so that the uh, granules will start working right away. Okay. And that should do it. One thing though I want to tell you, if you have children or pets that'll get into your plants, don't use the systemic granules. There's no sense in taking the risk then. Just go ahead and use the soap and wipe the scales off as you can. And if you're persistent, that'll work just as well. So anyway, Anne, that should take care of your problem. Well, thanks a lot. But if it gives you any more trouble, come back. Well, I know where to find you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Well, you're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. The first thing you want to do is to collect all the plants that you want to keep outside for the summer. And once you get them outside, there are two things you can do for them immediately that will make them very happy. The first thing is to clean their foliage, and the second one is to leach them. Yes, I do mean leech them. While that may conjure up thoughts of blood-sucking insects being put on their leaves, that's not what I mean. What I mean by leaching is you want to flush their soil very thoroughly so that the soluble salts that have built up over the past year or years is all flushed out. And now that happens from using fertilizers and simply from using water in your plants. So it's a really good thing to do once a year. And I'll show you what the soluble salts look like. You can see on this plant here that it has actually quite a buildup of soluble salts all around the edge. All that is just chemicals. And you can also see it around the bottom of the pot, especially near the holes. And I'm sure that if you check out some of your plants at home, you'll see something similar on at least a few of them. So now we're going to get out the hose and leach them. We'll get out the hose right over here. There we go. Now when you do this, you want to make sure to give them a lot of water. For example, this 10 inch plant here should get at least a few gallons of water going through it. So we'll go ahead and put some water on them. Then we'll come back and fill them up again. So that every single one of them is thoroughly flushed. It's really a very simple thing to do, but it really helps the plant out because the soluble salts can actually keep the roots from taking in water like it should. So this ought to do it. Now the second thing you want to do while you've got your hose out is to go ahead and clean off the foliage. Now I really recommend using a gentle spray when you're going to do that and I'll get my gentle sprayer right now and put it on the hose. Now when you do this, you're getting rid of dust that keeps the plant from breathing as well as it could or from taking in light as well as it could too. So this is a wonderful thing to do for them. And again, it shouldn't be too much trouble. So just get your hose on again and spray away except that my sprayer doesn't want to go on. <laughs> here we go. It's good to know how your sprayer works before you get out here to spray your plants. Okay, now that we got it going, we'll give it nice, make it nice and gentle for them. And just go ahead and make sure everyone gets a good soaking. Both of these things are a great thing to do and you really only have to do them once a year and this is the best time of year for it. They'll thank you later when you've got gorgeous plants at the end of the summer. Now occasionally you may have a plant in your house that has a really dingy dirty problem and a good candidate for that is a ficus tree. 
For some reason, they seem to hold on to dirt like a magnet. And I'm going to show you one of those right now. And we can do something a little bit different for that. Just set down the hose. Here we go, right over here we have the ficus tree. And as you can see, its leaves may not look too bad at first, but if I clean off just the bottom half, you can see how dirty the top half is. And even with regular dusting, they still seem to get really dirty. So what I recommend for this type of a plant that's extra dirty is to get out some good old soap and water and give it a good shampoo. And what I recommend using to do that is some ivory liquid mixed about two tablespoons to a pint of water. And here I have some ivory soap all mixed up and ready to shampoo this ficus tree with. And here we go. Now make sure that you spray the entire tree when you do this. Get it nice and soapy. That's, if you can, get every leaf full of soap. <laughs> that would be your goal here. And then once we've got it all soaped up, the next thing to do will be to hose it off and then let it dry. And again, if you have a really dirty plant like this, you only have to do this once a year. I know getting a ficus tree out of the house may seem like a project, but it's really worth it. It'll clean the air better, they'll grow better, they'll breathe better, everybody will be happier. If you just take a little bit of time to clean up your plants this time of year. Okay, I think that should just about do it for this one and now we'll hose it off and that should just about do it. Again, be sure to use a gentle spray or you'll knock the plant right over. And that's really all there is to it. Hi, Betty. Hi, Liz. How are you? Fine, how are you? Good. I just got in from work and I saw you were out oh. here and I wanted to catch you because okay. this is my wonderful hibiscus plant that uh -huh. hasn't bloomed in <laughs> eight months. I, it looks healthy to me. You're the expert, of uh -huh. course. But I just wondered, is, is there something wrong with it, why it hasn't bloomed? Well, actually, I don't think hibiscus bloom all the time anyway. I don't think it's supposed to. Yeah, I think it's cyclical, so, but I didn't know how often. Right. And I would suspect that it probably will bloom more during the summer than any other time. Okay. So probably it's about time for it to get started again. Good. But a few things there are, you, there are a few things you actually can do to ensure that it does bloom for you. And the first thing is, it, it is healthy, it is still quite healthy, but it looks to be a little on the sparse side. And I was wondering if you keep it right in front of your window, is it like right smack in front of the window? It's maybe a foot or two away. It's a picture window. It has a sheer curtain. Okay. Is that enough sunlight for it? Probably not. I mean, oh. that's with the sheer and just even a foot away for a plant that likes almost full sun. Okay. That really cuts it back. So if there's some way you can get it right in front of the window or move it to another window that gets a lot of sun, that would be the best. And another thing you could do is to put it outside for the summer and in a semi-shady place out in the back mm -hmm. if you've got a spot out there. No, I didn't and know it was hardy enough for it. that. Oh yeah, okay. just just sit outside. In fact, that's what we're doing all day out here is getting the plants ready to be outdoors for the summer. And this one, if you put it in a semi-shady place, I think you'll find that it'll start taking off. In fact, I have a hibiscus here that I took out of a fairly low light situation just a few weeks ago and I want to show you what it looks like. See, it's right oh here. my goodness. So it's, it's really, <laughs> it's just taken off and it's it's getting ready to bloom. I see what you mean about it sparse. It has no buds on it, right. Okay. And yours can look like this too. This okay. only took 
I would say less than a month before it really you know, filled out and it is getting ready to bloom. So you do want to fertilize it. Okay. I do think that's a good idea, especially during the summer months and use a uh, just a really good fertilizer, maybe something for blooming plants. There okay. are several out there specifically for blooming plants and do that and it should be fine. Great. But I'm also noticing one other thing. I see that on the undersides of your leaves. Oh, what are those? They, it looks to me like scale. And they're little, again, oval shaped. These are sort of a whitish color, just sticking right onto the bottom of those leaves there. And I think they're gonna give you some trouble if we oh. don't treat them pretty soon. So what do you do for but that? I do see them. Yeah, we got some more over here. There's a few under here and plenty of them under here. Hmm. I definitely think we should treat them. You want to do that? Please. What do I've you do for it? I've got some spray here. What I like to do is use an insecticidal, insecticidal soap, which is one of the safest ways you know, to take care of any of your insect problems. And I believe I have some right down here. Great. Thank you. So I'll go get it and also get my gloves Oof. at the same time. Would it eventually kill the plant? Yes, eventually. It'll take a while, but it'll start looking really bad and then <laughs> it'll die if you don't treat it. So, I'll spray it for you today. Thanks so much. Okay, now we'll start again with the undersides of the leaves. I don't know, scales must be being a prevalent problem right now. Ann just came over, you know, our neighbor Ann. Mm -hmm with uh, scales on her deep and so oh. I guess today's the day to get rid of scale. Gee, <laughs> definitely going around, huh? Uh-huh. Okay, you want to be very thorough and make sure the stems also get a good soak. And then the tops of the leaves. Wow, you really are drenching it. Yeah, you you really want to be very thorough. Otherwise, they'll escape. I don't know how they do it, but <laughs> they do. So we want to be very thorough. Do they just show up a certain time of year? Uh, they do seem to more in the spring and the summer when it's nice and warm out, but not necessarily. And then you may want to take some paper towel like this and just go ahead and wipe some of the undersides of the leaves so you can tell whether or not you're getting any control over your insects. Mm -hmm. And they should be gone now? Right, and then just keep checking them, you know, now and then. And you probably want to spray this again in another couple weeks and probably even another time after that. Hmm. But, well, I had no idea. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. And that should just about do it. If you have any more trouble with it, be sure and come back and ask me. But I think if you put it outside, it will start blooming very shortly. Okay. Okay? Well, gee. <laughs> Thanks so much. You're welcome. So long. Bye, darling. I'm now going to repot this Aurelia Balfouriana. It's now in a 10-inch pot, and I'm going to put it into a 13-inch pot, which should give it some room to move. Now, a lot of people I've noticed really want to go out and repot their plants. But the best way to tell if your plant needs to be repotted, and this is what I've found, is to poke your finger down in the soil. And if you can barely move it through, as is the case in this Aurelia balfouriana, then go ahead and repot it. Now, the first thing you want to do with these big plants is to tap the side of the pot. You can use the scissors like this and that should get the plant able to come right out of the pot. Now we'll see here this is always a delicate process with these big plants. Yes it's coming out nice and slowly and as you can see it's come out as one big root ball. So now I'm going to put it into this 13 inch pot and what you do is first you need to add potting soil. And then when you get that in, pat it down 
nice and firmly. That's important so that the water runs through evenly when you water it. Now I can tell this still needs more potting soil. So I'm going to add some more and again pat it down very firmly. Now take your plant and set it in the pot and you want to make sure there's at least an inch or two from the top of the pot from the top of the soil line so that when you put on water you can put on plenty enough water for it to go through and in this case it is and I'm going to take off a little bit of its excess topsoil here and now we're ready to fill in the sides so get my potting soil again. Now I see my plant wants to fall over, but once it's repotted, it should be a little more stable. Now I'll straighten it up and smooth it out. And again, let me see if I can show you this here. You want to pat the soil down, especially around the sides, very firmly. Then all you have to do is finish filling up to the soil line with potting soil and give your plant a good soak. It's really that simple. It is kind of messy and you probably want to take on a job like this with such a big plant during the summertime when you can do it outdoors. But it's well worth the effort when it needs to be done. So that's about it, and I know at the end of the summer I'm going to leave this out because it has been a little bit on the thin side, but by the end of the summer it'll be beautiful and full. You'll probably hardly even recognize it. Don't forget to water now. Hi, Megan. Hi, Liz. How are you? Good. And what you got there? Well, my mom didn't want this plant because it was all tangly and raggedy. What she should I didn't. do? You want to keep it for yourself? Yeah. Well, it is pretty grown out. It is looking a little bit on the straggly side. We well, you know what I would do if I were you is we'll make cuttings out of this, mm -hmm. and then they'll grow out, and when they've got some roots on them, you can start a whole new plant for yourself, and it can grow big and beautiful. Okay. You want to try that? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I've got some, a little jar down here and some water so we can get started. Okay. So we'll fill up this jar with water. Rooting cuttings in water is really easy. And then you just snip some of it back and stick it in the jar. And we'll take several cuttings, actually, so that you can start a nice big plant as soon as you get some roots on this. OK. Do you have any other plants at home? Um, well, I don't think so. So this will be your first one? Yeah. Well, this is a nephthitis, is what it's called. And it's a real hardy plant. And it's a really good one to start out with. OK. So I think you'll like it. We'll finish making some cuttings for you. And that'll do it. OK. So do you want to come back when they're all grown out and I'll pot them up for you? Yep. OK, great. There you okay. go. Thank you. Uh-huh. Today we've seen a few things you can do to keep your plants happy outside for the summer and some things to do that you might not want to do unless it was summertime. There are a couple other things though I'd like to note for you and one of those are to be sure to keep your plants in the shade when you put them outside. If you put them in the sun they'll burn up even though they may enjoy a sunny window in the house they won't enjoy a sunny spot outside. So please keep them in the shade. And another great thing to do, it's always a great thing to do, but especially in the summer, is to fertilize your plants regularly. This is their growing season, and they'll grow the best if you fertilize them regularly. And I also have some letters that I've gotten here that I'd like to read to you that I've gotten from some viewers. Now, the first one here says, 
Dear Liz, I saw you on ACT the other day. You said, I don't need to prune my philodendron very often. But how often is not very often? Signed, Sarah Colbert. Well, Sarah, the best way to tell is whenever it starts getting a little leggy looking, then that's the time to prune it. And I would say if you want it to know a time, generally between 6 to 12 weeks, depending on how much light it's in and how fast it's growing. So I hope that helps you out. And I've got another letter here. Let's see. And it says, Dear Liz, why are the leaves on my Ming Aurelia turning brown and falling off? It was a gift, and I'd like to save it. And this is signed Stuart Redman. Well, Stuart, there's two things I'd ask you to check. The first thing is your light. Ming Aurelias really like to be in good, bright light, preferably some direct sun. So check that. If you don't have it in a very bright place, you may want to move it. And the other thing is, they like to stay a little on the moist side. They should dry out on top, but that's about it. And if you're letting it get too dry, that'll certainly make the leaves crumble up and turn brown. So check both of those and see if that works. And I have one more letter here. Let's see. And this one says, my cat's favorite snack is my spider plant. Is there anything I can do to protect my spider plant? And this one's from Mildred Browning. Well, Mildred, the first thing you could try is to hang it out of their reach. Now, if you can't do that, you can always try putting several drops of Tabasco sauce in a pint, a pint sprayer of water and spray your plant with it, and that should deter them. So there you go.